Hello everyone, welcome to Brilliant by Numbers with Naina McFarlane. Here, we'll share introductory lessons on topics taught more extensively in our upgrade tuition program. Today, we will be looking at factorizing quadratic expressions with coefficient 1 and all terms being positive. Before we get into our lesson, what is your understanding of factorization? Factorization is the opposite of expanded brackets, which means putting an expression back into the brackets they may have come from. With that being said, let's dive into the lesson. The general form of a quadratic expression is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are integers. So we're now going to explore an example that helps us to identify a, b, and c. Let's consider the example 9x squared plus 15x plus 5. a is the coefficient of x squared. Therefore, as we can see, I've also color-coded it for it to be clear to you. So a is equal to 9. B is the coefficient of x, therefore b is equal to 15. And c is our constant term, which means that this number does not change its value at all, so c is equal to 5. Now that we've learned how to identify a, b, and c, let's move further into the lesson. So here is a prerequisite skill that will help you on your journey of factorization. So I've prepared here a number pair. We're going to find the sum of each of the pairs and also the product. And I've also put in bracket here so you understand or be reminded that sum is equal means addition and product means to multiply. So I've done the first one extensively, two and three, the sum of 2 and 3 is equal to 5, and the product, when we multiply 2 times 3, the answer is 6. So I started the second one, 4 and 5, added them together, we get 9, but multiplying them together, 4 times 5 gives us 20. So I'll just fill that in. We've got 4 and 6, so the sum of 4 and 6 is 10. And when we multiply them together, the answer is 24. Now, could you work backwards? I have 36 as my product and sum 12. What possible two numbers could add together to give 12, but when I multiply them, I get 36. Feel free to pause the video and have a think. I hope you got it right. So the answer is 6 and 6. So, adding 6 and 6 together, we get 12, but multiplying them together, we get 36. We have an, also another example here. The sum of two numbers is 12, and the product of those two numbers are, is 32. What two numbers add together to give 12, but multiply together to give 32? And the answer is 4 and 8. So, 4 and plus 8 gives us 12, but multiply together, we get 32. And the last one. So we've got a sum of 8 and a product of 15. So the answer is 3 and 5. So 3 plus 5 gives us 8, and 3 multiplied by 5 gives us 15. With all of that being discussed, and you understand the connection between the two number pairs and the sum and the product, we are now ready to factorize quadratics. Let's have a look at our first example. So here, we're asked to factorize the quadratic x squared plus 4x plus 3. Remember, a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is our constant term. So we're going to identify what is a, what is b, and what c from this quadratic. Now, you may notice that there's no number before x squared. That's because the coefficient is equal to 1. 
Because there's just one x squared, there's no need to write a one before because it's clear to the eye that there's only one x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and write that a is equal to one, b is equal to four, and c is equal to three. Now, very important to note here, we do not need a to factorize our quadratics. As you can see along the side here, I have noted that b is the sum of the number pair that we have discussed on the previous slide, and c will be the product of the number pair. So we want the product, two numbers that multiply together to give us three, and those two numbers must also add to give us our b term. So the factors of three, here we're asked to list the pairs with a product of three, and the answer is one and three. Now we can see here that we're also asked to find the pair of the sum of four. So one plus three gives us four, so that means this pair fits the criteria. They add to four and they multiply to give us three. So we're ready to put those in brackets. Very simple from here, we just simply need to put x plus first number pair was one and the second number pair was three. So we have now successfully factorized our first quadratic, but we could also prove if this is true by expanding the brackets. Remember, we've also said at the beginning that factorization was the opposite of expansion. So I'm just going to quickly expand this along here so we can prove. And if you're in your examinations, it is quite important that once you find yourself with the time, Expand it just to make sure you haven't made a mistake. So x plus 1 and x plus 3. So to prove this, I need to do x times x, which is x squared, x times 3, which is 3x, x times 1, which is x, and 1 times 3, which is equal to 3. Now all I need to do is to simplify the b terms in the middle. So I've got x squared plus 4x plus 3 and yes we're right back to where we started. So I'm now sure that my answer is correct. Let's dive into a second example. So here I want you to work along with me. I've got x squared plus 5x plus 6. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to write down my a, b, and c. So in this expression, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 5, and c is equal to 6. Remember, I need a number pair that will sum to the middle term but multiply to the c term. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to list the factors of 6. So the first one, I need the factors to be a product of 6, so I could then have 1 and 6, because 1 multiplied by 6 is equal to 6. But, unlike the other question we did, 1 and 6 are not the only pair that could multiply to 6. So, we could also have 2 and 3. Now the question becomes, which pair will add to the b term but multiply to give the c term. So remember, we want them to add to five. So if you thought of two and three, yes, you thought right. So two plus three gives us five, but when we multiply them together, we get six. So then we are ready to put them in our bracket pair. So x is equal, so x plus two and x plus three. And there we've got it. We've now factorized our second quadratic. And remember, I've taught you in the first example how to prove it. So go ahead and try to prove that one. Once you're happy with that, we're now going to go into our third example. So in this question, we're asked to factorize x squared plus 7x plus 12. Again, we're going to write down a, b, and c. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 7, 
and C is equal to 12. Remember, I need my factor pair. My pair should multiply to give me 12, which is my C term, and they should also add to give me my B term, which is 7. So let's go ahead and list our factor pair. Hmm. Yes, you thought right. This one is also going to have more than one factor pair. So let's go. The first one is 1 and 12. 1 times 12 is equal to 12. But does that add to 7? Absolutely not. So we need to go again for another number pair. So we could also have 2 and 6. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. But do they add to 7? No. So we need to go again. So this time we can see we have not one number pair, not two number pairs. But let's see, will it be 3? Will it be 4? Let's see. So we could also have 3 and 4. Yes, we have now found our pair because, remember, we want them to be a sum of 7 and 3 add 7, sorry, 3 add 4 is equal to 7 and multiply together gives us 12. So we found our pair, we just need to put them into our brackets. So the answer is x add 3 and x add 4. I would suggest at this time you pause the video expand the brackets and prove for yourself that the answer is x plus 3. Now, finally, we're going to do our last example. So we're asked here to factorize x squared plus 12 plus 35. You know the steps by now, so we're going to write down A, B, and C. So A is equal to 1, B is equal to 12, and C is equal to 35. Now you can see that we have moved in the complexity of the numbers, larger numbers this time. However, the concept remains the same. So I want to have number pairs with a product of 35. And when I add them together, I want them all to be equal to 12. So let's go ahead and list our factor pair. So again, we've got 1 and 35. 1 times 35 gives us 35. But clearly, they do not add to 12. So our second number pair is 5 and 7. 7 times 5 is 35. And also, it adds to 12. So we have found our pair. So all we need to do at this stage is just simply to put them into our bracket. So the answer is x plus 5 and x add 7. And don't forget, you can prove your answer by expanding the brackets to ensure that your answer is correct. I hope that you found this video beneficial and is better able to solve quadratic expressions, coefficient 1 all times being positive. I look forward to having you in my next video. So go ahead, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell so you can see when another video is posted.